this is Jamisha, a stylist within me, and if this is your first time, welcome to my channel. Um, I would like for you guys to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you're not new, hey, welcome back. Um, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use your buttonhole presser foot on your sewing machine. Um, I actually have the Brother CE 1100 PRW machine. So that's what I'm going by, and this this presser foot um, came with my machine in the kit. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to operate this and basically get your button sewn, your buttonhole sewn, and use this more efficiently. So basically, this is what a buttonhole um, presser foot looks like, and it's actually labeled in numbers. I mean, not numbers, but in letters. So the presser foot is num letter a um i don't know if you guys can see that but it has the letter a on there um if you have this machine the presser feet actually go by different letters so buttonhole is presser foot a and um the zipper foot will be like letter i so you can go by those accordingly here i've just placed a button i'm just going to be using this button i think this is either like a five eighth if i i think five eighths something like that but basically i'm gonna do this little overview so this would be where your button goes your button goes here however big your button is or however small you just adjust it to that length so i'm gonna plop that button right back in there and it holds it and it's also in the manual telling you how to operate this if your button is too big to fit on there. Um, but yeah, so this this little slot that moves accordingly to your button and you actually pull down your button live lever, which I'm going to show you on the machine in just a few seconds. Um, and this is what connects to your presser your presser foot so you clamp that down onto your machine to sew and this moves accordingly to whichever buttonhole stitch that you have selected and it has tick marks here so you can line up to where you have um basically outlined where you're where you're gonna put your buttonhole and so it also shows in the book like how you would um it's a different thing in the book, but you would tie some thread here. So if you would look into your manual, you would see what those two outside um, little marks are. But I'm just going to be showing you how to operate on your machine. So let's get started. Now I just turned on my machine so you see the light here. Um, and what we're going to select, we have a variety of button stitches. You have your keyhole, button holes. Um, you have like your bound button holes, the different kinds for knits, but we're not going to be doing any knits. So I'm just going to use like a simple button hole stitch. Um, we're going to, I'm going to use number 35. So if you have this machine, it's going to tell you actually what foot you should be using, the stitch width, length, all that good stuff. And then you would choose your stitch number. Like I said, I'm going to choose number 35. So let's go with number 35. And it tells you that you need presser foot A, which is your buttonhole foot. And it already has a preset stitch width and length for you. So you can just uh, adjust that to your liking. As always, I leave my machine on a tension of three. Um, I think I have everything pretty much set up. So what we're going to do is change out our foot. Now, this little little lever back here, this is for your buttonhole. So what you would do is you would place this behind, in between there, in between the two um, standing marks, the lever for, for measuring out your buttonhole and the top one. So it also tells you in the book to, to like thread your thread down below so basically just pulling it through that 
little hole at the bottom but you don't have to if you don't want to now I'm just gonna lightly mark out where I want um, to give you guys an example and here are some like samples of basically like the buttonholes so I'm gonna mark out one for us and I'll be right back okay so now I have my samples marked out and by the way do not mark on your fabric with pen like I did this is just an example I would suggest you do something with uh, the transparent not the transparent but the disappearing ink or with the Taylor's chalk or something like that when you're marking your fabric so this is just a sample piece. Um, but what you're going to do, see how close I can get this. Focus. It doesn't want to focus. So what you're going to do, you see where I made this like little T? You're going to line that up in between those tick marks. You should have a red and green tick mark. But you're going to line it up so it should be like a little bit farther ahead. You're going to line it up on that little tick mark and basically drop down your presser foot. Now, this is going to go on its own. So, you don't really have to just stitch. You just need to hold the um, top thread back a little bit. I hate how my camera focuses so much. Uh, you just have to hold that a little bit. And so, now we're just going to... It's actually going to re do the reinforcement stitch for you. So it's going to pretty much move on its own. And you can press the uh, foot pedal as fast as you want. See how it's doing the reinforcement? on its own too so that's a plus you basically do not have to hold this you just need to let it do the work make sure you have your top thread and your bobbin threaded correctly and i'm gonna leave the links to my videos for that somewhere um on the screen at the top in the eye uh so yeah you guys can check that out and it's pretty pretty much that's it so i'm gonna just show you again And so this was your finished buttonholes. Um, yeah, if once you get done creating your buttonholes, you can go in with either like some sharp snips, they're like real small scissors, or you can use a seam ripper. Just be sure not to go all the way through, um, like cut to, but not through. So that's pretty much it. And I also did a different kind of buttonhole down here. If you guys can see. So this is more squared and then this has the curved edge sorry so once you get the feel of it it's pretty much uh that simple and you can just keep going but if you're gonna change out your presser foot be sure to raise that back up and snap it off not snap it off but press the little lever in the back and you can change it back to whatever presser foot you had on there and continue on. And it'll pop up an error too if you uh, sew without having that. So I'm going to show y'all what that looks like. Okay. Say I'm about to So I haven't put a presser foot on. But I still have my buttonhole lever down. So I'm going to press my foot. And it should pop up an error. Yeah. E1. So that's to remind you that this is down um, and that also that I don't have my foot down in the first place. So, well, E1 is for that. So it's going to show E2 
when you have your uh, press the foot down and you still have this buttonhole lever, it's going to show you E2 on your screen. So, but if you forget to let down your lever, let down your press the foot while your while sewing it's gonna show you one. so I hope you guys learned something from this quick video um it's pretty simple to set up your machine and just get going like once you get the feel of the machine and using like different pressure feet and things like that it'll kind of help make your sewing experience a little bit easier um, so you can pretty much whip out buttonholes in under maybe 30 seconds or so or just say under a minute you can whip out a buttonhole in under a minute so i hope this guy i hope this video helped you guys a lot um be sure to let me know what videos you would like to see next i have um, more videos in store for you guys so i'll see you guys next time bye